So you may be wondering why this Springfield product is not legal in California. Well, <laughs> I'll show you why. That's right. It contains straws, and not just any straw, multicolored straws, and some of them are bendy. This right here, my friends, is a California felony conviction. <laughs> Okay, so here is a real, real quick unboxing look. I know I try not to do unboxings as part of a first hundred, unless there's some significance. So you can recognize the upside down XDS logo on this suitcase sized case for this pistol, which you'll find out in a second is extremely oversized. So this huge box for this little bitty gun. And Springfield Armory, formerly the company that gave you all kinds of extras is now giving you the gun and two magazines and there, nope there's not another one in the gun either so you get only two magazines I know with the uh, there were some early reviews where they sent out advanced T&E copies to some of the reviewers and gave them three magazines but with the one you buy you get only two and let's take a look at what they are it is a seven round magazine with this pinky extension base plate. We'll look at that in the gun in a second. And the nine round magazine with the extended base plate that's obviously going to enhance or extend the grip quite a bit. And we'll look at that here also in a second. Gun has a little chamber flag in it. We'll clear that out. We don't need that anymore. Leave that in the box. Comes with a lock, comes with a little sample of lube and an owner's manual um, and there's a warranty card up inside the lid that's it that's what you get so no more holster no more mag pouch no more third magazine uh, substantial decrease in the amount of product you're getting and I don't think that they have dropped the price accordingly so this is uh, this is about five and a half hundred this gun and uh, you get less than you used to. But let me get over that and move this box out of the way and we'll talk about it. All right, tell you what, I'm just going to use the top of the box as my backdrop here for you. So here is, of course, the 3.3 inch XDS in 9mm with the Mod 2 grip. You've probably already seen several videos on it. It comes a couple of different ways, and this way has the Ameriglow front sight and the blacked out rear sight, also from Ameriglow. I asked my dealer to get me that configuration. He obliged, and I'm happy because that's just the way I wanted it. I love Ameriglow sights. I've been buying Ameriglow sights and installing them on my guns for years, and I'm just real happy to see the industry kind of catching up to their coolness <laughs> and using them they are awesome so anyway happy with that as I said it comes with just two magazines now let's take a look at the two first one is the seven round they are both single stacks of course seven round magazine with the pinky extension which gives you an okay grip but it kind of compresses your fingers together here so and I don't have a big hand so if you had a good size hand, you might find that actually very uncomfortable. All right, the next one is the nine round. I believe there's also an eight round with a shorter, more abbreviated extended grip. But here's the nine rounder with the super extended grip. And that does really stretch things out. And you can see that gives you a lot more space. I do like the uh, Mod 2. I was a big fan of the Mod 2 as soon as I saw it. And when I got it on the compact version of the 45, I liked it a lot. I got the XD, XD45 in Mod 2. You guys have seen that here on the channel a couple times probably. More important to me than the change in texture, which is nice. and Very, very nice. And it's a nice change. 
is just the ergonomics. They've they've rounded it up a little bit. The other the other XDS was very blocky. Uh, it was made for Lego people, and I'm not a Lego people. I like I like things to have rounded edges. <laughs> and um, this right here on the front strap is probably, and, and actually even on the back strap, just having those rounded as opposed to square is going to make this gun so much more comfortable to shoot. Previously, I did not own the XDS-9. I've had one, I've done reviews on them, and I've had them for a period of time, and even carried them as part of the review and evaluation process, but I've never owned one. So, but I have had the 45. I had the 45, which of course you know came out first, and I had that when it was brand, brand new. So I've had it a really long time. So I never felt the need to get the 9mm because I had the 45. And then when the 45 came out in Mod 2, I said, well, I've already got the 45. There's no need to get that. So now the 9mm, which I didn't have, has come out in Mod 2, which I didn't have. And I thought, okay. <laughs> Two didn't haves are now a good reason to go ahead and get it. So I have. So here it is. And it's still a pretty brand new gun. So uh, this is a fairly fresh look. There's not a lot of differing opinion out there yet. There will be soon, I'm sure. Okay, I mentioned how uh, Springfield Armory has gone on the cheap and they've taken away a lot of the goodies um, that they used to give us in the box. Luckily, I still have my XDS gear paddle holster from my 45 ACP XDS 3.3 and this one fits absolutely perfectly in it. There's no reason why it shouldn't. It's the same exact slide for all intents and purposes and the frame at least to the back of the trigger guard has not changed so the good news is if you have a holster and it doesn't have to be this one from Springfield it doesn't have to be the free one if you've invested in a holster it should fit just fine and before I forget to say it this video is brought to you by the patrons on patreon thank you guys you rock and you are truly supporting this channel. Thank you very much. Okay, I am seven yards away from that target. Textbook self-defense distance and a good place to start with a three and a half inch, 3.3, excuse me, nine millimeter. Very first shots through the new Mod 2. Springfield, XDS in nine millimeter. Shooting impact ammo, 124 grain ball. Wonderful sight picture. I love that blacked out rear sight. And that awesome lime colored sort of neon yellow front. Wow. <laughs> seven rounds goes quick, doesn't it? So that was the seven round magazine. And now, I'm going to try the 9-round magazine. And that's all I've got, unfortunately. Not having a previous 9mm XDS to draw from, resource-wise. It's too bad it's not the 45. I've got, like, drawers full of those magazines. But no. Two magazines. That's it. That's all I got. Ooh, look, I missed one. The trigger is stiff and fairly heavy but it is very, very crisp with an excellent reset that you can probably hear. I really do like the feel of this grip. I like the feel of the ergonomics much better than the old style and uh, yeah it just it's uh, it seems like a shooter I mean the other the previous version 9 millimeter was a great shooter too the only reason I didn't own one is because I just didn't see any reason to not because I didn't like it but uh, this one is far superior in my opinion 
course, that is just an opinion. Okay, let's pick up the pace a little bit. This is, after all, a defensive handgun. And in defensive use, probably not going to be shooting so slow and deliberately. So, let me try and um, get a cadence going here. Nice. I do tend to go a little bit low left the faster I shoot, but... It is a nice, nice shooter. Recoil is almost non-existent. It really is a non-issue at all with this gun. Talk about some of the reasons for that in a bit. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I'm finding that the finding the gun stays on target really, really well. Very little muzzle flip. And part of that is due to the, the tough recoil spring, the dual recoil spring that's managing that energy. But the other part is the ergonomics and the fact that you've got your hand way high in there. They did improve on that from the version one. They got it so that your hand is much higher up into the beaver tail. That beaver tail resting in the web of your hand also creates a wedge that helps to reduce muzzle flip. And then just the, ger the general ergonomics, the better curved back strap, and honestly the better curved front strap with those little finger grooves, the undercut for the trigger guard, all those things work together to help manage that recoil. And I'm finding that the gun shoots very, very flat for a 3.3 inch. Okay, no orange dot this time. Let's just go to the head of this target with a relatively respectable cadence and see if I can just put them all in the head. That's all I want to do. Keep all the rounds on the target. Does the slide stop also function as a slide release like it's supposed to? Yes, it does. Very well it does. Of course we have our loaded chamber indicator. You can see that standing up at attention there with a round in the chamber. Very nice. I really, really like the way this thing feels and shoots. Very impressive. Okay, and no evaluation of any kind, even a first hundred, really should be complete for a self-defense carry gun without shooting self-defense carry ammo. So here is a magazine of seven rounds of Sig Sauer Elite Performance V-Crown 
124 grain. That is my chosen carry load. So let's give that a try. Also, it's good to make sure that there's no feeding problems with hollow points. Very nice. And I'll tell you, man, even with the potent load for self-defense, it still handles that recoil very nicely. I always like the XDS, and I think they've only improved it and made it even better. Okay, so a few words of summary to wrap this up, this first 100 with the XDS 9mm in the Mod 2 configuration. Uh, it's available about three different ways, I believe. This way is with the Ameriglow Tritium night sights. You can also still get it with the traditional fiber optic front, and that should be a red one. Uh, and that would be the two dot rear. And you can also get it with that configuration and also add a laser to the front. So there's about three different ways they're packaging it. This is the way I wanted it. Luckily enough, this is the way I was able to get it to the original. Uh, the big change truly is the frame, what they've done here with the grip portion of the frame. Everything else is about the same. They haven't changed anything there. Um, the ergonomics are vastly superior, in my opinion, to the squared off first generation. It was tolerable at best, um, and at worst it would, it would bother my fingers to shoot it, and it would bother the the web of my hand to shoot it because of the square edges. They've taken those square edges away as they should have really in the beginning but now very very ergonomic. The subtle and gentle finger groove area here is actually a nice plus and this extremely dramatic undercut on the trigger guard helps you get that finger right up in there. You can get a little higher on the beaver tail than you could on the first generation and there's a little more of it so there's a little bit more polymer protruding there than there was on the first generation. Another main change is the grip safety. And you can see that they've added sort of a 1911-esque memory bump out here on the grip safety. So there were two things. Number one, um, is that something you would notice shooting the gun? Because you see when you fully depress the grip safety, it doesn't go flush to the back strap there's a portion of that that sticks out. So is that going to be an irritant? I did not find it to be. In um, just over 100 rounds today, uh, I didn't find that to be irritating, and I didn't even notice it. You know, I wasn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. Where I think it does make a difference, though, is people would sometimes complain. One of the things they didn't like about the grip safety was if you didn't have a perfect grip on the gun, uh, and if you were shooting from some sort of an awkward position, you may not fully depress the grip safety and then you couldn't get the gun to fire. Well, this helps because now that gives you, that basically gives you that much distance. We could measure it, but I'm going to guess that it's probably in maybe an eighth of an inch. That gives you a head start, <laughs> an eighth of an inch head start or a cheat. So it really, what it does is help ensure that your grip holds that grip safety in all the way. So in that regard, I think they did a, a good thing. I think they made a nice change. And I think more people will benefit from it than don't. Everything else is the same. It is ambidextrous in terms of the magazine release. It is ambidextrous in terms of the trigger. Talk about the trigger for just a second. The trigger is stiff. It may wear in a little bit, but it's not going to wear in a whole lot. And the trigger is is tough on this one. I just measured it, and five pulls gave me an average of 7 pounds and 12 ounces, which is pretty stiff for a trigger. Um, and just for, just for fun, I compared it to the old 45 XDS that I have, and I did a five-round comparison, or five-pull comparison with it, and it was six pounds and six ounces. So you've got more than a pound 
like a pound and a quarter difference. This is one versus one, so it's not representative necessarily, but um, having said that, the trigger is heavy, and, and it's a hard trigger, but it's a very, very crisp trigger, and I said that when I was shooting it. Uh, so I don't dislike the trigger, but it could be a little bit lighter. I know people want to know if the magazines are compatible, and I'm sorry, but I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you yet with that, because I do not have a 9mm first generation XDS to compare them with, or any magazines from it. However, I will take a guess that they probably are compatible. And speaking of the magazines, you only get two, as I mentioned and complained about. They also do include, it's in the little bag with the gun lock, the flat base plate. I was about ready to go on a rant and complain about that and then I discovered it in that bag. So if you want to swap this out for the flat one you can do that. The reason why you might want to do that because a flat base plate is much more conducive to pocket carry. And last but not least <laughs> I asked the folks on the Facebook page, hey what would you like me to answer for you if I can? And one of them said, what about the grip zone? Well, the grip zone used to say, there used to be a nice big banner right here. It said, grip zone. Hey, everybody, look, grip zone. Well, thankfully, they kind of took that part away. I think they decided that that was maybe, didn't go over like they thought it was going to. So they took that away. As far as the overall grippiness, um, I like the texture. This is that, uh, this is comparable to Six Hours E2, and it's comparable to Smith & Wesson's M2.0. Um, it's not as aggressive as either of those, I don't think, but it is comparable. It's that type of texture, and it's good, and that is the way everybody's going. That's the new direction. I think you still could benefit from putting a talon grip on this, and you're probably thinking, well, of course, that's what you're going to say. <laughs> but, uh, but true, I, I think uh, putting a rubber talon on this is going to enhance that grip because it's really the ergonomics the shape of it and the size of it is what makes it great putting a rubber talon on it is just gonna make it even better in my opinion I probably will try it and then I'll let you know what I think alright so there's a first hundred sorry for the long-winded summary but um, I like it the gun has a lot of promise I think they made a lot of changes in the right places. Some of it might be marketing stuff, but most of it is very practical. These are the last of the impact ammo, and that concludes the first hundred. Thank you for watching. I really do like this little gun. I think it's got a lot going for it. You're going to see it again, I promise. There's a lot, a lot of things to compare it to.